Now that we've taken a look at basic shapes, we're going to look at surface area and volume of spheres. Spheres do kind of fall under their own category and have their own series of formulas, but the first part of this is we're going to look at terminology associated with the sphere. First of all, what is a sphere? A sphere is an object in space where all points are equidistant from a common center. So, next, what is a center? It is defined as the convergent middle of a sphere. Next, radius. In this case, a radius is a segment that has one end point at the center and the other on the surface of the sphere. Next, diameter. In this case, a diameter is a line segment that has both end points on the surface of the sphere and its midpoint at the center of the sphere. Next comes up great circle. Now, great circle, circumference, and hemisphere are spoken of in regards to a plane intersecting our sphere. Any time that a plane makes a cross-section of a sphere, it will form a circle of some sort. But the great circle is a section, a cross-section circle of a sphere whose center is also the center of the sphere. So this will maximize the circle that is created on that sphere. From this, we get our circumference, which is simply the distance around the great circle of a sphere. So the maximum distance around a sphere would be the circumference of that sphere rather than a lesser circle created by a cross-section. And last is hemisphere, which is one half of a sphere created by a great circle plane. If we were to cut our sphere along that great circle, we'd create two hemispheres. So with all these terms and definitions in mind, let's start looking at theorems and ideas that come up in regards to surface area and volume of these spheres. First up, we're going to have surface area of a sphere. This is theorem 1110, and it reads, the surface area of a sphere is four times the product of pi and the square of the radius. So what this means, if we were to find the area of the great circle created by that bisecting plane, we would also, and then multiply that by four, we would have the surface area of the sphere as a whole. So using the examples of the spheres, uh, sphere provided and then the uh, description given, what would be the surface area of this sphere on the left? It has a diameter of 10 meters, but we need to work from our radius. So surface area of this sphere, according to the theorem, is 4 times pi r squared. What would our radius be if the diameter was 10? Well, that's 5, so we have 4 pi times 5 squared. That would be 4 pi 25. 4 times 25 is 100, so we'd have 100 pi meters squared. Using 3 and 14 hundredths as our approximation for pi, this would come out to be 314 uh, meters squared for our total surface area. Next, a little bit of application that can come from this. Earth's equator is about 24,902 miles long. What's the surface area to the nearest thousandth, it's that nearest thousand square miles? In order to calculate this, we're going to have to do a little bit of computation on the side. First, let's start with circumference. Circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. And what we need is surface area, which is 4 pi r squared. So there's a number of ways we could go about this, but one of them is we're going to need to find the radius. Let's begin by solving for radius using this circumference value. So 24,902 is equal to 2 pi r. In order to find r, we take our 24,902 and divide it by 2 pi. Now this becomes calculator work and we come up with the approximate value of 3,963.28 and that's an approximate distance in miles. So now we're going to take this and compute out our surface area. So our surface area is going to be 4 pi times that radius squared. Using the storing function of the calculator, we get 4 
pi, and I'm going to square that radius that we have and come up with 157075560 approximately. And then multiplying this all by 4 pi gives us a total of 197,387,017 and a half square miles. Rounding it to the nearest thousand, which we were directed to do, that's 197,387,000 square miles. So sometimes you're given one piece and you need to go and find others in order to make that possible. Now, done a little bit with surface area, let's start taking a look at volume. The formula for volume, which is theorem 1111, has similarities to our formula we used for a cone. We're going to do a comparison to a cylinder of the same height and radius. So volume of a sphere, theorem 1111 reads, the volume of a sphere is four-thirds the product of pi and the cube of the radius. So from a visual point of view of this formula, V equals four-thirds pi r cubed. So what would be the volume of this sphere that is shown here? We can see we have a radius value of 6 meters. So going through and doing the calculations with substitution, we have v equals 4 thirds pi times 6 cubed. 6 cubed is 216. Now, multiplying this by 4 and dividing by 3 gives us 288 pi meters cubed. Now, multiplying that by 3 and 14 hundredths for an approximate value of pi, we come out with 904 and 32 hundredths cubic meters. So this is a fairly good sized object when we start looking at its volume. One thing we do often need to do, just like find, going from the circumference of the earth to find a surface area, is being able to convert from a surface area to a volume or from volume to a surface area. So just so we have an opportunity to see what that would look like, let's take an example. The volume of a sphere is 5,000 square meters. What's the surface area to the nearest square meter? So we know volume is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed and we need to solve this for r. So using substitution 5,000 equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. Multiplication property of equality I can multiply both sides by 3 fourths which would give us 3,750 equaling pi r cubed. Dividing by, par, dividing by pi will leave us with r cubed equaling 3750 over pi. Solving for r, we would take the cubed root of each side. So now r is approximately equal to 10 and 6 tenths. Now we can take this value here and go and find our surface area. So surface area is calculated as 4 pi r squared. So our surface area is going to be 4 pi times that 10 and 6 tenths value squared. Again, doing the computations, you can store that value into your calculator. So when you square it, you get 4 pi times 112 and a half. Multiplying this through, because we are to round it to the nearest square meter, we get approximately the value of 1,414 meters square. So, a lot of times we're given a value, we trace it out and we solve down to where we know R, 
that radius, and then we go and we use that new R value to find what we're actually looking for. So a lot of work here in one very small section and lesson. Make sure you have these ideas down and are ready to go.